and they're finally getting a little bit of rain. We've had one rain in four months. Our lakes are drying up. Be praying for us, folks. We need a bunch of rain. So God send it. Fill all the lakes back up. Okay. And water all the flowers so I don't have to do it. Let's see. Tonight, November the 10th, 2023, we're talking about making babies. How the Dumbo octopus. This is number 40, 141. No, number 46. Okay. Uh, 46 times I've given you the atheists an opportunity to explain how this evolved. You missed every one. Let's see, three strikes and you're out. I think 46 strikes, you ought to really, really be out. Okay, let's see. Uh, family from, where did I say you're from again? Uh, Destin. Destin, all right, down the road. Yeah, good to have you here. How'd the kids like the tour today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Good to have you all here, brother. Okay. We're on Rumble, we're on uh, Odyssey, on Genesis Baptist Church, on YouTube, a bunch of different places. If you want to check us out, go to drdino.com, and they're all listed right there. I'd like to see thousands of young people start a ministry similar to this. Here's my stuff if you want. You can get all slides on a thumb drive, 50,000 of them for 100 bucks. Please do something for the Lord with your life. Start a little museum, start an aquarium in your house, start a petting zoo, do something. Everybody can do something. The worst of you can serve as bad examples, if nothing else, okay? But find something to do. Now get some bunnies and let the kids come pet them or something like that. Cute little cuddly goats and sheep. We got all kinds of stuff here. Okay. Tonight, the Dumbo. In Lenox, this is church. We believe the Bible is true. Solomon said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Why should we consider an ant? Well, there's a lot you can learn about an ant. We'll do that some other time. 12,000 known kinds of ants. That does, we don't know how many ones we don't know about. Yeah, there are 12,000 we know about. Who knows? Nobody knows how many unknown are there. How would you know? You wouldn't know. Never mind. Okay. Consider the lilies. There's lots of different kinds of lilies. All kinds. And there's things to learn from a lily. He said, consider the ravens, consider the sparrows. There's things to learn from nature that'll draw you closer to the Lord. So we should stop and consider anything that lives and makes babies and wonder how on earth did this evolve? It didn't. It had to be designed. Okay. There's animals that produce asexually and sexual reproduction. We can talk about that another time. There are 50 kinds of watermelons. They might have had a common ancestor called a watermelon. God said they'd bring forth after their kind. Now, if you want to help support our ministry, we stay open for free. Visitors come all the time. I gave three tours today, and we go through a lot. Of, Billy, how much gas do we go through? A uh, 50-gallon drum every... Yeah, yeah. okay. So if you want to help us, stay open for free. Join our 777 Club. So I want to go. I want to like what they're doing. Go to drdino.com. Say, we'll take you on as a missionary, Brother Hoven. Or click the yellow donate button. To make any checks to CSE. If you want a tax receipt, you send a message to the secretary at drdino.com. Okay, get our video series uh, right here somewhere. Yep, here we go. Creation seminar series, 50 bucks for the whole thing. Scan that QR code, right? Yes, sir. Man, how, it's amazing how that works. And get our series on what on earth is about to happen. Whoa, what on earth is, folks, it's coming like a freight train. That's, we're here. Okay, he said, God blessed him and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas. It's a blessing to be able to have children. God said, that's a blessing. He blessed them and said, go have a bunch of kids. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. He blessed Noah and said, be fruitful and multiply. I think it's God's plan for everybody to have a bunch of kids, okay? God blessed him. He made him male and female, and there's only two, Junior. <sighs> Gee whiz, okay. Male and female, male and female. If you can't figure out the difference, come see me. I taught anatomy and biology. I'll explain it to you, okay? Male and female, male and female. So I think God in his infinite wisdom gave the command for all life forms to make babies, and he gave each one the needed equipment and the drive to do so. Why would any animal want to make more of its own kind? It just makes more expenses, more stress on the environment, more strain on the food supply. How many of you have children? Anybody have children out there? Okay. How many of you have children and they cost money to have those children and raise them? Yeah. No, no, no. It's all free, right? Okay. God gave an amazing variety of ways for plants and animals to make babies, just so that you will have no excuse on Judgment Day. I got a theory. 
God made so many amazing and different complex ways that animals produce and reproduce that no one, not even hardened unbelievers, and evolution believers, will have any excuse on Judgment Day. These methods of reproduction had to be designed. Solomon said in Psalm uh, 103, or David 1, Psalm 139, I will praise thee. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't have a problem getting alone saying, God, thank you. You're amazing. This is cool. Lord, thank you. Some of you can't do that, can you? That's a shame. So we talked about the anglerfish. Nobody answered it. Talked about the tardigrade. That was number two. Nobody did it. The honeybee, the watermelon, the starfish, the mantis, the mudskippers, the beavers. What are, where are you guys, you atheists? Come on. The ant, nobody did that one. The octopus, nobody did that one. Tonight it's a special kind of octopus, okay? The sponge, nobody did that one. The barnacle, the fly trap, the flatworm, let's see, the needle beard, sea devil, the uh, bl blue banded gooby, the electric eel coming up next, nobody did that one, okay? Uh, the seahorse, the mannequins, the whales, the shark, the blue whale, the red whale, the green whale, the pink one, nobody did any of the whales. The plover, that's an amazing one, okay? The porcupine. Did that guy say we might be able to get a porcupine for our... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what I heard. Get a porcupine to have here in our petting zoo. Rex, you get to pet it first. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. Okay. <laughs> the tarantula, we got one of those here. Did you kids get to hold the tarantula in the science center? No? Oh, uh, oh they haven't had the science tour. Tomorrow you do that. Hold the pet tarantula. The toad, Suriname toad, makes babies out of its back. How did that evolve? Okay. Let's see. The platypus. Nobody did that one. The kangaroo, the bacteria, the Komodo dragon, the hippopotamus, the condor. I'm waiting on you atheists to step up to the plate to explain how it evolved. Don't make fun of Christians and creation and try to find a fault in the Bible. You got the dumbest religion in the world. Explain how this evolved. The sea slug. Nobody did that one. Hmm. Why you can't answer it scientifically? There is no scientific answer. It had to be designed. Ah, yep. And if your evolution religion isn't true and God designed all the plants and animals, that changes everything, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Joe oh, does. Okay. The kiwi, nobody did the kiwi. Come on, guys. The tortoise beetle, uh, nobody did that one. The dandelion, the uh, love bug, oh, get rid of those, please. The short beaked echidna, and the, we didn't do the long beak. E explain either one, okay? The wasp, the snail last week, and this week, or oh, the insect last week, and now the Dumbo octopus. Why can you not admit you are wrong? Atheists, none of these can be explained with your stupid evolution religion. It can't be explained. Your religion is dumb. It didn't happen. Evolution didn't happen. Admit it. God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind. God said, he just said, he spoke it into existence. And every living thing God made and saw, it was very good. Yep. God said, let there be light. Let there be a firmament. Let there be waters. God just spoke until he got to man. Then he handmade that one. So how many remember the Disney movie about Dumbo, the elephant with the big ears? Anybody remember that? I didn't realize that came out in 1941. That's a long time ago. He had big ears and he could fly. Well, there's a octopus called the Dumbo octopus because it has look like big ears. There are 300 species of octopus that have been recognized, have an internal shell and two fins on the head, the Dumbo octopus does. Octopus divide into two types, deep sea finned octopus and their finless shallower water cousins. Now stop right there. Kids, listen to me. This is baloney. All the octopus are not cousins. God made them bring forth after their kind and man has decided to clump them together in groups. And it's some person's decision that the 300 octopus are the same kind, the same variety of, of animal and our cousins. That's not true. You shouldn't use the word cousins or related to when you talk about animals. You don't know that. But this is the way they slip in their evolution religion without people knowing it. Oh, look, they're cousins. No, they're not cousins. They're all designed to be uh, made to bring forth after their kind. Dumbo octopus facts. Adult Dumbo octopus average about seven, eight, or eight to 12 inches long. They, can't, they weigh up about 13 pounds. I like the standard system, not the metric. I understand metric. I can handle that. But let's see. Um, it has large eyes on the big octopus, which can get up to eight inches across. Just the eyes on the, on the big Dumbo octopus. The biggest one was almost six feet. Okay. Like octopus, 
And by the way, octopuses is correct, okay? Not octopi, okay? Like octopuses, Dumbo octopus can change its transparent layer of the skin. They can change colors. Huh. They're amazing creatures, these Dumbo octopus. They live in the deep ocean, 13,000 feet down. That's why you, they don't know much about them. It's hard to go down there and, you know, watch them, right? They live in very, very, very cold water and almost complete absence of sunlight. So their great big eyes are almost useless. They can just see light and dark is probably all, what little bit of light there is. Or if some of the other animals light up down there, they can see that, okay? Dumbo octopus are naturally rare and the deep sea is enormous. So these species have specialized behaviors. Oh, that's a code word for evolution, okay? How about their design? Anyway, to increase the likelihood they can successfully reproduce anytime they find a mate. It's a big ocean and they're scattered out and sometimes they may not find a mate for a while, so they got specialized. I think they were designed for this guy. Females apparently carry eggs in different stages of development and they're able to store sperm for long periods of time after mating. How did that evolve? Huh? Sperm only lives a few hours. How did that evolve? The female can store sperm. Huh. Use of, using these advantages, female Dumbo octopuses transfer sperm to their most developed eggs anytime. How did that evolve? How does she know this egg is developed enough, now it needs the sperm? How? Guys, would you, atheists, please start explaining some of these things, or else admit you got a dumb religion. Just admit it. It's dumb, right? So when the environmental conditions are right for reproducing, though they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor, Dumbo octopuses lay their eggs on the bottom, attached to rocks or other hard surfaces, according to Oceana.org, okay? These are little tiny octopus eggs. Do you realize each one has the DNA code to make a whole octopus? Mama had to copy that code thousands of times. And one mistake and it'll die. Yeah. Largest Dumbo octopus ever was almost six feet. That's a big one. Okay. Some of them are pink, some of them are yellow, some of them are gray. All kinds of octopus. This is, and God made 300 different kinds of octopus. These are not Dumbo octopus, but they're interesting. Huh. There's a Dumbo octopus. Looks like Dumbo. Okay, let's play a quick video here. Get the tech guy excited when I do this. There, all right. Octopus plushie at the bottom of the sea. And are those floppy ears on its little head? Meet the Dumbo octopus. Residents of deep sea floors everywhere, these little guys might win the cuteness pageant for cephalopods. Oh, they're just so cute. Who is the cutest octopus ever? What do they use their ears for? How do they catch their prey? And in which aquarium can you see one? Turning your heart into mush, here comes the Dumbo octopus. Living as deep as 7,000 meters below sea level, the Dumbo octopus, or Ogopachuthus, is the deepest living octopus in the world. They also fan around at depths of 400 to 4,800 meters near California, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other areas. There are 13 varieties of the Dumbo octopus, and they all belong to the umbrella family of octopuses. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, not octopi, it is octopuses. Although I thought that too for a second. Everything you ever told me was a lie. That means a webbing connects all their arms and helps them swim. Some Dumbo octopuses are just 20 to 30 centimeters, and occasionally they grow as big as 1.8 meters in length. But the most striking feature is their adorable floppy ears. I hate to burst your bubble, but those ears are really fins they use for swimming. They're so cute, though. Unlike other octopuses, Dumbo octopuses don't swim using jet propulsion. They use their umbrella-like web tentacles and fins that look like ears to steer in a chosen direction. They can also crawl on the ocean floor. Like the plushies they resemble, Dumbo octopuses come in a variety of colors. They can be red, brown, pink, or white. Sometimes their ear-like fins are a different color than their bodies. When they feel threatened, Dumbo octopuses can flush their colors and blend in with the ocean floor. 
Well, see, for millions of years, they couldn't do that, and so they all died. They all, they all died. They all got eaten. But now they, they slowly evolved the ability to do that. Yeah, it took a long time, millions of years. Just like their shallower dwelling cousins. Not so dumb after all, eh? Nothing will stand in our way. Their large, manga like eyes take up one-third of their head-like mantle. But guess what? They don't see well. In some species, their eyes don't have a lens, and their retinas are not well developed, so these dumbos can only detect light, dark, and movement. That's probably enough to navigate the dark, spare, and harsh environment they live in. Dumbo octopuses eat whatever they can find on the ocean floor. Snails, worms, and animals living along thermal vents are some of the unexciting options on the octopus's menu. Snails? That's so good. These deep sea dwellers flop onto their prey and swap with whole. Protrusions called cirri, near the suckers on their tentacles, make small water currents to move their food towards their beaks. Although food is scarce, no big predators will come after a little dumbo unless it wanders into shallower waters where killer whales, sharks, and tuna might make these little cephalopods into a quick snack. But that must be extremely rare. Unlike other octopuses, dumbos have not developed elaborate defenses like having spines near their suckers or carrying ink to shoot at attackers. They Notice the way they keep putting things in there. They have not developed these things. They don't ever want to say we're created or designed. No, they throw in things like cousins and related and developed and evolved. It's your religion you're trying awfully hard to push, guys. I'm not falling for it. Do you have some unusual adaptations, though? These are... And they use the word adaptations also. We've got the code word for evolution, okay? Octopuses are so rare, they can't afford to mate at only one time of year. To be ready at all times, the females carry eggs at different stages of reproduction. They also store sperm packets for a very long time. This allows them to fertilize whichever eggs are ready by laying them on the sea floor and anchoring them safely to hard surfaces. And in case you were wondering, newly hatched babies already have their big dumbo ears. <laughs> we still have a lot to learn about these deep sea octopuses, but their location poses a real challenge for us. Unless you get to pilot a deep sea challenger mission, you're likely never going to come face to face with a dumbo octopus. Sorry. But you always have this heart melting image of dumbo. Aww, so cute. If you can't get enough of spellbinding octopuses, we've got more on another episode. Swimming with. Anyway. <clears throat> Dumbo octopus. Uh, let me get over here. Let's see. They say there are 17 species. Some say 13. Some say 15. I don't care. Okay. They're all an octopus, right? Belong to a group called umbrella octopus. Now, again, the octopus didn't decide to put themselves into a group or start a committee. Man has decided to make a group of them, right? That does not mean they're related. They may be. They may have come from a common ancestor. But don't, don't fall for that propaganda. Let's see. Um, uh, they swim on the, along the ocean floor. So Dumbo octopuses navigate the water by slowly flapping their ear-like fins using eight limbs to steer. How long do they live? Three to five years is the guess. Usually one arm of the male octopus has a protuberance, a little bump coming out, which is used to deliver sperm into the female mantle. How did that evolve? The females store the sperm to use when conditions are favorable. Now, with some of the octopuses, that arm comes out full of sperm, and he injects it and then leaves, breaks it off. Because she'll eat him. So he's got to get away. Male octopus has a modified arm. They can't call it designed. You're not allowed to use the word designed, okay? Called a hectococcalus, which is to transfer sperm to the female. The hectocopolis is a muscular hydrostat that can be inflated to guide the arm into one of the two siphons on the female's mantle. How did that evolve? Look, I know it works. I understand. And it works. It's amazing. I want you atheists to step up to the plate and tell me step by step how this evolved, what it evolved from, and what you have in the way of science to back it up. Not a story, not a fairy tale. Show me some science. You're always claiming creation isn't science. I call ourselves creation science evangelism, and it is. 
show them, show me the science behind your evolution. Start with this Dumbo octopus. So it has a muscular hydrostat that can be inflated. Once detached, the hectocotylus can swim on its own to the female. How did that happen? Where it attaches to her mantle and fertilizes the eggs. Female octopuses can exhibit cannibalism and may kill and eat their partner. Yeah, there's some humans. Never mind. Okay. So the male octopus has evolved, there it is, got to use the word evolved or it won't get published in a peer-reviewed journal. They have evolved a modified arm to deliver the sperm from a safe distance. Do you, atheists ever stop and think about what you think about? Do you really believe that happened by chance? How do Dumbo octopus reproduce? They seem to have developed specialized behaviors. All of this is a feeble attempt to leave God out of his own creation. You don't want to give God the glory, do you? Females seem to have eggs constantly at different stages of development. By having this conveyor belt of eggs ready, they can mate and lay eggs whenever the opportunity arises. This differs from other cephalopods, which usually have one or two breeding seasons. Uh, it is thought the male Dumbo octopus stores sperm in a projection on one arm, and when they encounter a female, they transfer the sperm over in a convenient sperm packet. Again, we're just now understanding how they do this, but that does not explain how it evolved. You guys are failing miserably to explain it. Females may, may be able to store sperm long term. So if they don't have any eggs ready, they can store them until they're ready. This is fertilizer is spelled differently in England. Don't, it's not my spelling. That's the British spelling. Okay. That's why they needed our help to win the war. Okay. Female Dumbo octopus lay their eggs on the seafloor attached to rocks, coral, other hard surfaces. Young hatch from their eggs at a large size and are immediately capable of surviving on their own. What? Mom and dad don't teach them anything. As soon as they hatch, they know how to be an octopus. So all that had to be in the genetic code, like the beavers. They know how to build a dam. They've had baby beavers where the mother gets killed. They raise the baby in a zoo or something, never sees another beaver. Mama didn't teach it anything. When they let the beaver go, it knows how to build a dam out of mud and sticks that'll last 100 years. You almost think it was designed, wouldn't you? Dumbo octopus can breed anytime. Okay. Some biologists claim this to be an evolutionary advantage. There you go again. You got to glorify evolution, don't you? Why can't you say it's an amazing design? Can't you say that? Chances of a female finding a male to fertilize her eggs are less on the deep ocean floor. So they always have eggs. When they meet a male, she stores the sperm for the male from the male and utilize and uses it to fertilize her most developed eggs. How does she know which ones are the most developed? Which evolved first, the male or the female? How did the complex system of storing eggs until the male is around evolve? Evol evolutionists, come on. Uh, explain how the reproductive system of the male evolves step by step. And then when you're done with that, I want the female explained step by step. Guys, there is zero, no evidence for evolution. You cannot explain any of these, and I know it. The evolution believers need to give a real scientific explanation of how the octopus method of reproduction came about by blind chance. Not a story, not a fairy tale. David said, when I consider thy heavens... Do you ever stand in awe at the universe we live in? Do you ever wish you knew the creator? I think it's great. I'm one of his kids. I can stand in awe when I see things he's made. Some of you can't do that. Did the male produce sperm for millions of years for no reason? Till it had learned it had to find a female? Just the production and the storing and the de delivering of the sperm is a really complex process. All of it has to work. <clears throat> and it all just, it, it got ready millions of years before there was any females, didn't it? Some architects design an expensive house and we say, wow, this guy's good. Some landscapers make beautiful landscaping. We say, wow, that's beautiful. Some guys have big muscles like mine and they say, wow, this guy's strong. It's not the right time to laugh, guys, okay? Right. Some cabinet makers do amazing jobs with woodworking. 
atheists argue against design using arguments they design. You need help. A good potter can take clay and make amazing things out of clay. God can take clay and make a human. There are 11 systems of organs in the body. 11 organ systems. Nervous system, muscular system, skeletal system. You really think, and they all work together. It all happened by chance. Most logical people, when they see something like that, would say, wow, this had a smart designer. Why can't you say that? Are you not allowed to? You lose your job? It's human body. Let's see. 40 trillion cells hmm. that grow and reproduce and interact with each other. And when they wear out, they make a copy of themselves and then die off. And the new copy lives on. Huh. I think it had a smart designer. 40 trillion cells. I don't have a problem glorifying God. God can take clay from the ground and make a man with 40 trillion cells. Atheists look at that and say, wow, all this evolved from nothing for no reason. <laughs> Rex, we've got to come up with a chart. There's got to be different levels of stupid. Oh, we do. Levels of stupidity. Let me get that down here, brother. I forgot about that. I haven't read that in a while. Let me see. Okay. Levels of stupid, low, that's the sluggard, slothful, unwilling to work hard, guarded, brutish, hateth reproof, hates knowledge, elevated, that's the scoffer, walks after his own lust and willingly ignorant, high, stupid level, evolutionist, they believe they come from rocks, and then there's severe, that's the atheist, claims there's no God, severe, stupid, we got it, yep. That's a good way to put it. Okay. So, God makes billions of microscopic life forms as amazing as bacteria. The atheists say it evolved from nothing for no reason. God said, I'm the Lord. Oh, Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. I'll sing unto the Lord as long as I live. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Anyway, I don't have a problem praising the Lord. Sorry, some of you do. Be still, God said, and know that I'm God. I'll be exalted. Glory to his name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the amazing octopus. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Someday God's going to hold a little Dumbo octopus in front of you, atheists, and say, Hoven tried to explain this couldn't have evolved. Why didn't it wake you up? Wake up. You're living in a fairy tale world. SpongeBob, imagination. Didn't happen. Didn't start from a Big Bang. You think the octopus came from that? I need help. Okay, sorry for going so long. Uh, questions and answer time. And atheists, I'm open for a debate any time. Do we have any more lined up, brother? Uh, yeah, beginning of December with time. Beginning of December. Where's all the. Come on, I'm trying to get to 500 before I die. I got 3, 337. Okay. Question for Kent. You need to call upon God and believe on Jesus to be saved, or can you only believe on him like many verses say? Hmm. Well, God's looking at the heart more than the words. Especially, there's no special prayer you got to say or things like that. Uh, he's looking at the heart. Do you, want, do, do you want to receive him? I think he's to the point where if we just kind of lean his way, he'll take it. Uh, like the guy was drowning, you know, and he's trying to pray and talk to the Lord and save me, and he bowed his head, and the Lord said, I'll take that as a yes, you know. Okay. I don't know the answer to your question. I just know he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But I don't think there's a magic prayer or any special formula. God's looking at your heart. Do you believe he, he, he died on the cross and rose again? Would you believe you're a sinner? Do you believe he can save you? Ask him. Just ask him. I did 55 years ago coming up. And he moved in. Sometimes that makes life a little uncomfortable when you got the Lord living in your heart. <clears throat> you may want to change a few things, but that's between you and him, okay? Okay, I'd like to start a Bible study in my small living room. Well, start one. Just plain start. Okay, just announce to all your friends and neighbors, hey, 7 o'clock, we're going to watch one of my videos, 10 minutes, and shut it off, and then and have a Q&A time, Bible study. A lot of people use that. Use my video series as the basis. Hey, folks, we're having a movie at movie night. Do it with your kids. Just watch 5, 10, 15 minutes, and then stop and say, let's discuss that. And usually they're going to say, turn it back on. We want to see more. 
It's not because it's me. It's good information. Teaches about God's word. If you don't like mine, get somebody else's. But get some creation. Start a creation Saturday night viewing at your house. Offer pizza. Free pizza for those who come. That'll get them. Free ice cream. Okay. What's your favorite dinosaur? Hmm. Probably the Brachiosaurus, the guy on my business card. The Brachiosaur, the guy. Oh. This guy right, oh, right here. That's, I don't know. I like them all. Uh, have you heard the answers in Genesis is claiming that the location of Noah's Ark where Ron White worked on is false? I don't know. They can claim that if they want. I disagree. I think if Ron White found the right spot. I don't work for them. I think I, I love what they do. I recommend them. But I think we differ on a few theological things. And if they don't like me saying that, tough. They don't pay my salary. Go ahead. I heard some evolutionists believe the octopus is from outer space and came to Earth on meteors millions of years ago. I'd say that would be up in the either high or severe. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for recommending Henry Morris Defender's Bible. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, I've been reading it daily, seven years. Evolution is a lie and people need to wake up. I agree, Well, I agree. We sell the Henry Morris Defender Study Bible, King James Bible, with Henry Morris's footnotes. Excellent Bible. Okay. Could you comment on Carl, Pagan, uh, Carl, Carl Sagan's video where he suggests people of Okinawa descend from local crabs? Hmm. Does Carl Pagan think the people from Okinawa came from crabs? <laughs> because they have slits on their back. Um, I, I have no opinion, no comment, other than I'd, I'd put him on here somewhere if he believes that. There it is. Could you do the hummingbird beetle someday? Ah, I don't know. Uh, I got job security. I know that with all the uh, different kinds of animals and uh, hummingbird beetle. I don't think I've heard of that one. Okay, I'll look it up and see if that fit. I got a bunch lined up to do already. Is long suffering your strongest fruit of the spirit? Been banging your head against the atheist wall for a long time now. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't claim to have. I don't ever pray for patience. Uh, tribulation works patient. When you pray for patience, God gives you trouble, and it makes you get through it. So, at one time, I said, "Lord, I want patience, and I want it right now." <laughs> Could you explain Genesis one to two on Earth was formless? What does that mean? I cover that on my book. Uh, what on Earth is about to happen? About the original creation, what it was like. Uh, formless and void, it simply means it was unfilled. Uh, it wasn't done yet. It's like driving the truck up loaded with lumber, dump it all off, and then start building the house. Well, the house is unformed and unfilled. Nobody's living in it when you first dump the stuff off. It just doesn't mean it's, it doesn't mean it's been destroyed. It just means you're not done yet. Okay? Let's see. Nick, you are a giant among the modern create champions for Christ. I don't know about that, uh, but thank you. Appreciate that, Nick. I hope thousands more get inspired to do exactly this. Okay. Can you tell more about eating seeds and other foods that are taught unhealthy but aren't? Don't. Got one right here. <laughs> Genesis 1, first chapter in the Bible, God said, eat the fruit, the vegetables, and the seeds. And I ate the seeds to the apricot, the apple. Yep, so I was going to kill you. Okay. Next. Um, sometimes I wonder what life before BC, before Christ. Oh. Well, the whole Old Testament is telling us about that time. Um, okay. Next. What happened in the fishermen threw back any crabs that looked like samurai, and so the majority of the population began to appear. So they did evolve from crabs. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to doubt that one. Okay. Is there a special meaning to 
sit v oh sit versus stand what i'm sitting right now and i'll be standing up when we're done i don't understand that question was there something i said that confused somebody i don't know i don't know who is with Kent over there, his family or office? Let's see, we got uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, about 18 people here tonight. Uh, come visit Dinosaur Adventureland, Genesis Baptist Church. Uh, so some of the people that live here, some visitors that come, anybody can come to our Bible study, any time. Uh, let's see, Paul, do you think the Nephilim are the Greek gods? Uh, who are the Nephilim? I covered that on video number seven, what little bit I know about it. I don't think the Bible's clear enough to be dogmatic. If the Bible isn't clear, I, I, here's the verses on it. You read it for yourself. Uh, get video seven, question answer for more on that one, Paul. Thank you. But no, I don't think they're Greek gods. I think different pagan cultures have made gods out of all kinds of things. And the, the Egyptians made gods out of a frog. That's real. That's way up there. Yeah. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, nothing. Saturday. Yay. And Sunday, we'll get back to Exodus again, Lord willing. The creeks don't rise. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. It's free. You can't beat it. And finally, we're going to get water back in the lakes, guys. <sighs> Praise God. See you tomorrow. Oh, Sunday. Bye.